So one day he shows up at my workshop for yet another sound post adjustment. He sheepishly walks in with his bass and a sound post adjuster in one hand. And he says, please, please take this away from me. I can't stop. What's going on? It's Jason Heath and Arnold Schnitzer, one of our beloved and most respected double bass luthiers, has come out with a book called The Handy Double Bassist. It's a guide to the do's and don'ts for repairing your bass yourself. Totally cool book. It's available in print edition and in our digital sheet music store. Links in the description below and let's dive in. This is abridged because when I originally wrote it and kept writing it, I was on a, uh, an RV trip at one point during the pandemic and I kept adding chapters and I ended up subtracting as much as I had added because I realized that this could really cause people to screw up their instruments. Ah, nice. Thanks, Arnold. Arl is such a great <laughs> writer and speaker and just such a fun person. Get the forward from Arnold here. Yeah, he's in Las Cruces, New Mexico now, which is cool. He's covering what you need in terms of tools and supplies, how to use them. The things you'll need to do your own maintenance and very minor repairs. Uh, a chapter on essential care and maintenance. A chapter on restringing your bass. It's amazing how sloppily some people do that and actually uh, can damage some very, very expensive strings. Then there's bridge adjusting, simple topic, a chapter on rattles and buzzes, what causes them, how you might be able to fix them, adjusting the nut, something that is not handled all that well by many professionals and amateurs. Lots of folks had a hand in making this and just breaking it down parts of the bass right there. One of Arnold's own basses showing that that's very cool. Interior parts of the bass. So we have the center seam. We have the bass bar F holes. The linings are on the side. Okay, so quite a bit of gear, but it's great to just see it all there. I love that he has a spot for you to take notes. I can see this being well used and sitting on the bass player's music stand or on the shelf right next to them just when you, when you need it. It's there. So you're looking for obvious open seams, tailpiece fully in contact with the ribs, any space showing under the fingerboard when you shine light behind it. I've had bases, not my own thankfully, where that's happened. I have a controversial chapter on making and using hot hide glue because that's really the right stuff for repairing uh, seams, etc. That's not to say you can't use other glue like uh, pre-bottled hide glue, though it's it's not as good for several reasons. But I won't give that away because then nobody will buy the book. <laughs> Crack repairs. Then I've got a chapter on minor edge repairs, minor crack repairs, and one of my favorites, emergency repairs. When you absolutely have to play that gig after your fingerboard fell off, things like that. Ooh, and he's got Matthew Tucker's bracing system. I will link up to something about that. I've talked to Matt for the podcast and did a luthier conversation where these were on display. These are really cool. The next chapter is called About the Sound Post. It is by no means a primer on setting or adjusting your sound post, which is something that absolutely should be left to a professional because with the complex curves inside of a base, anytime you move it or turn it a little bit, it doesn't fit anymore. And you need the expertise to be able to refit, make sure the tension is right, et cetera. One time th this client of mine, another very prominent classical client from the, let's just say Northeast, he came to me probably six or seven times in a two week period. Uh, from pretty far away to mess with his sound post because every time he would take it home, it did, just didn't feel as good as it did in the workshop. So one day he shows up at my workshop for yet another sound post adjustment. He sheepishly walks in with his bass and a sound post adjuster in one hand. And he says, please, please take this away from me. I can't stop. Oh, this is great. Wolf Tones. I remember Arnold having some amazing articles back in the day about Wolf Tones on his old website. There's a chapter on Wolf Tones and all the most modern uh, equipment you can use to kind of uh, 
tone down a wolf tone, though they never really go away. And I also do want to say that every string instrument has a wolf tone somewhere. And when they're vibrating their best, the wolf tone is sometimes the most noticeable. Wolf tones are not necessarily the enemy. They're something you need to learn to live with. And maybe you can ameliorate it a little bit with different items. What I advocate is C extensions for all with chromatic closers, because anytime you have a wolf tone, let's say your wolf tone is at A natural. If you go a fourth above that in the A scale, which would be D, and set your closer on your C extension to D and let the low string vibrate when you play any A, the A wolf tone will pretty much disappear. You, I'm sure you know this, it's a, a common trick. And of course, uh, A flat wolf tone, D flat on the C extension, et cetera, et cetera. Wow. Homemade weights, weights you can purchase. C extension info, restoring the finish on the neck. Ooh. Then I have a special chapter that's only for plywood bases because they have some unique problems that carved bases uh, generally don't have. And troubleshooting. Ooh. I have a chapter on troubleshooting and then I finish it up with sources of supplies and relevant organizations. Like let's somebody, say somebody gets really jazzed by this and they think they want to become a luthier or a violin maker or a guitar maker or whatever. So there's sources, there's schools and different programs that you can go to. That's a look at The Handy Double Bassist by Arnold Schnitzer. What a cool book. Arnold, you're the best. I'm so glad that you put this out in the bass world. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.